This is going to be Chapter 3, Autonomic Pharmacology. And introduction, this chapter presents the general anatomy and physiology of the autonomic nervous system and discuss how specific neurotransmitters transmit nerve impulses and how certain drugs can affect the functions of these neurotransmitters. Understand the basic function of the autonomic nervous system. Healthcare professionals can better predict the various effects drugs may produce on the effector organs by doing this. The nervous system. The uh, nervous system is the control system and communication network for the body. It stimulates movements, a receptor for outside information, and controls bodily functions. The system is broken down into two divisions, the central and the peripheral nervous systems. Now, the central nervous system houses the brain and spinal column, and the peripheral nervous system is the nervous system outside of the brain and spinal column. And there are several divisions that we'll talk about. So the nervous system first. So in the nervous system, we have two parts. And we just talked about these, the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. In the central nervous system, we have the brain and spinal cord. In the peripheral nervous system, we have motor nerves and sensory nerves. So these are essentially input. and these are essentially output. The motor nerves have two more subdivisions, the somatic nervous system, which is voluntary, and the autonomic nervous system, which is involuntary. And we can also think of the autonomic nervous system as the automatic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system has two more subdivisions, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. Now this is what automatically runs and maintains homeostasis on a lot of things in the body. The sympathetic nervous system would dump adrenaline, essentially, which is going to soup things up, a go fight or flight. And then the parasympathetic nervous system is the nervous system that we activate when we want to digest, uh, feed or breed. Now that is the only thing that it does. Muscle movement, slowing down things, it's the opposing for everything that we see in the sympathetic nervous system we see an opposing force with the parasympathetic nervous system as an adjuster, if you will. The central nervous system. The central nervous system contains the brain and spinal cord. The brain receives and integrates data and regulates body activities. The spinal cord carries information to the brain and also provides reflexive action. So if you put your hand on a hot stove, ow, it'll move it. Something you don't even have to think about. It's called a reflex arc. Peripheral nervous system. In the peripheral nervous system, we have an input and essentially an output. The efferent, or exit, is going to essentially, let me get in here, is going to come out of, or exit out of, the central nervous system. And the afferent, or the sensory neurons, are going to input into the central nervous system. And this not only controls the autonomic nervous system, not only controls our internal environment, but it also controls actions of our organs that we never even think about. Things like digestive, um, intestinal motility. Um, I'm going to adjust this arterial so that I have adequate blood pressure. Uh, things that we don't have a mental cognition or thought process over that the autonomic nervous system kind of controls. Now the somatic nervous systems are external environment. Not only does it tell us sensory input, but also we have motor neurons on there that we have physical control over. So we can move things on the desk like a glass of water or a, a mouse or a pen. Uh, the peripheral nervous system is a system of nerves that connect the brain and the spinal cord with the receptors, muscles, and glands. This is broken down into an afferent or sensory pathway and an efferent or motor pathway. Efferent exit, efferent input. Anatomy physiology, synapsis. No axial physical connection exists between the two nerve cells or between the nerve cells and the cell under nerve aids. Specialized chemical called neurotransmitters are used to conduct nerve impulses between the target cells. So a neural signal will come down this and it will hit this end plate and release neurotransmitter in between these two areas. Now that neurotransmitter then is picked up by the target tissue on the other side and the actions performed. Autonomic division. 
Network of nerves that connects to visceral organs such as the stomach and heart regulates the system without any kind of conscious effort whatsoever. The aim is to maintain a stable environment. This is broken down into two divisions, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. And we can kind of look at it like this, that it is essentially a teeter-totter that is always trying to maintain balance in the body. The primary autonomic neurotransmitters, and this was from the previous page to where synapses occurred, those neurotransmitters are the ones that actually do the business, are acetylcholine and norepinephrine. The acetylcholine is the primarily the cholinergic synapses, or the parasympathetic nervous system, and norepinephrine is the adrenergic synapses, or the sympathetic nervous system neurotransmitter. Primary sympathetic neurotransmitters. We have lots of receptor sites for the autonomic nervous system adrenergic side. The adrenergic receptors are alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2. And we also have some dopaminergic receptors, delta-1 and delta-2, to look at. Uh, alpha-1, peripheral vasoconstriction, mild, bronchi mild bronchial constriction. Alpha-2 inhibits the release of norepinephrine and peripheral vasodilation. Let's explain something right now about this. That if we stimulate both of these, the alpha-1 will always override alpha-2. So we're always going to get vasoconstriction even though alpha-2 gives us vasodilation. Alpha-1 will always overpower alpha-2. Beta-1 and beta-2, an increase in the cardiac rate and force. So this is, means our heart rate is going to get harder and faster. And then beta-2, vasodilator. Vasodilation occurs in dilation of the renal, coronary, cerebral arteries, and bronchial dilation. Smooth muscle dilation occurs whenever beta-2 is stimulated. Dopaminergic receptors are a prephase of adrenergic neurotransmitters, and the more dopamine we get on board is a precursor to epi and norepi. So we can utilize our own body's catecholamines a lot faster. Uh, we're going to see this whenever we start talking about treatment, that the more dopamine we put on board, we can burn through the patient's own naturally occurring adrenaline a lot faster. We may have to start them on a supplemental drip at some point. The sympathetic nervous system. Stimulation of this does various things, and this is fight or flight. Anything that you've ever done whenever you've been scared are all a result of fight or flight neurotransmitters or adrenaline. The production of sweat, constriction of blood vessels to the skin, you kind of lose color, and increased blood flow to the skeletal muscles. I need to maybe run away from T-Rex here. An increase in the heart rate and force of contractions, bronchial dilation, stimulation of energy production, fight or flight. We're going to have to have energy and we're going to have to have oxygen. Reduction of blood flow to the abdominal organs. I don't really need to digest something at this time. I pretty much need to go or go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Decreased digestive activity. Relaxation of smooth muscle in the wall of the urinary bladder. Release of glucose from the liver. More energy. And pupil dilation. I need to be able to see everything. Actions of the adrenergic receptors. Alpha-1, if we look at these by the top thing that it will do here, it makes it a lot easier for us to see it. Causes vasoconstriction. Alpha-2. Peripheral vaso limiting norepinephrine's release. So if we limit the norepinephrine release, <clears throat> we may get a little bit of vasodilation occurring too. We're going to see medications that are specifically alpha-2 stimulants or agonists. Beta-1, increase heart rate, contractility, and automaticity. And automaticity is the speed or the velocity of the electricity that it's firing. So the heart rate going to, itself is going to increase. It's going to become harder, faster, and stronger. Please make note of these terms right here, chronotropic and inotropic. You're going to see them in a lot of definitions of the drugs here later on. And dromotropic effect. Uh, beta-2, peripheral vasodilation, bronchial dilation, uterine smooth muscle relaxant. Now we're going to see varying medications that can not only be used for asthma, but they can also be used to stop contractions. Uh, an example of this is terbutaline or breathine. Uh, gastrointestinal smooth muscle relaxation as well, and then dopaminergic. And now we we'll primarily see uh, dopa dopamine 1 and dopamine 2. In dopamine 2, we see renal vasodilation, mesenteric artery vasodilation. Dopamine 1 is a precursor for the actual norepinephrine. So we'll probably from the dopamine 1 receptor, whenever we trigger that, we'll see the body utilize more and more catecholamine. Reset here before we go to the next slide. 
So sympathetic nervous system is fight or flight. The stimulation of the sympathetic nervous system causes the release of epinephrine and adrenaline. Heart beats faster, breathing rate increases, pupils dilate, peripheral vessels constrict, and the blood is shunted towards major organs. You can either run or you can go toe-to-toe with this person, one or the other. So either do this or go fight them. Primary parasympathetic neurotransmitters are acetylcholine, and there are two receptor sites instead of the four that we just learned for uh, adrenergic or sympathetic. There's only two receptor sites for acetylcholine. There are nicotinic receptor sites. These are primarily in the muscles. And there are muscarinic receptor sites, and these are primarily in organs throughout the body. So nicotinic receptors found in the neuromuscular junction and initiate muscle contraction as a part of the somatic system. Receptors are found in all autonomic ganglia where acetylcholine serves as a presynaptic neurotransmitter for both parasympathetic and the sympathetic systems. Muscarinic are found in many organs throughout the body and are primarily responsible for promoting the parasympathetic response. Location and effect of the muscarinic areas. Function on these, and we're going to look at the comparison chart that we look at here in about another two or three slides is a lot better to take a look at, but these are all the functions and the locations of the actual muscarinic sites, which would primarily be in the organs. Example of this would be the heart. Now, we know if we remember from A and P that the 10th cranial nerve provides rate on the heart. So the functions of this 10th cranial nerve, parasympathetic innervation, Decreased heart rate and decreased conduction rate. And the locations for these are in the sinoatrial and atrioventricular node. And the arterioles causes dilation. Well, these are in the coronary, skin, mucosa, and cerebral arterioles. GI tract relaxes it. Increased activity, increased salivation, and increased secretions. And they're located in the sphincters, motility of the actual organs themselves, salivary glands, and any exocrine glands that it comes along with. Now... Lungs, bronchial constriction. I want to point this out here at this point. That the parasympathetic nervous system causes bronchial constriction. So whenever we start talking about we give people anticholinergics or anti-parasympathetic drugs, it would be to stop the trigger. One of the reasons would be to stop the trigger on the actual bronchial constriction itself. And a drug I'm uh, referring to is Atrovent. Um, Atrovent not only does that, it gives us more bang for a buck if we look at it as far as sympathetic versus parasympathetic. If we give somebody an Atrovent, it causes a, it's a parasympathetic or anticholinergic or parasympathetic and leaves a sympathetic dominance. In addition to that, we're going to give them a beta-2 agonist, which is a sympathetic receptor, and we're going to get us more bang for a buck. Uh, the gallbladder causes contraction of the gallbladder, urinary bladder, relaxation and contraction. Uh, the liver, glycogen synthesis, lacrimal glands, secretions, increased tearing. In the eye, contraction for near vision and constriction. Uh, in the penis, the parasympathetic nervous system or muscarinic causes erection. Parasympathetic division. Stimulation of the system causes the release of norepinephrine to be blocked. The slowing of the heart and the breathing rates, the constriction of pupils, pupils constrict and blood flow is returned to, is returned to the stomach, skin, and etc. whenever you initiate parasympathetic tone. And we call it the rest and digest system. Now, in the overall overview of the autonomic nervous system, and if you'll think of this like a teeter-totter, it's easier to understand sympathetic versus parasympathetic. And we maintain homeostasis with this. So if the pupils dilate, so we want to see something better because we've had a dump of adrenaline. The parasympathetic nervous system would cause pupil constriction. So these are constantly battling to maintain balance. Salivary glands. The sympathetic nervous system reduces salivary gland uh, secretions. Example of this is if you, just before you're ready to get in a fight, you can get dry mouth. Now, in the parasympathetic nervous system, the salivary glands, the production on them is increased. Oral nasal mucosa, uh, mucosa pr production is reduced from the sympathetic side. On the parasympathetic side, mucus production is increased. And we're going to see this continuously again and again and again throughout this. Heart rate 
on the sympathetic side is increased, heart rate is decreased on the parasympathetic. Bronchial muscles are dilated on the sympathetic, bronchial muscles are contracted or constricted on the parasympathetic. Peristalsis reduced, peristalsis increased. Motility reduced, motility increased. So we're going to see opposing <clears throat> signs and symptoms occurring whenever we get one of these sympathetic, one of these autonomic nervous systems to working more than the other. Conclusion. The autonomic nervous system regulates automatic effectors and maintain or quickly restore the state of equilibrium to the body's autonomic functions and maintain a level of homeostasis. The parasympathetic or cholinergic division of the autonomic nervous system regulates the body's involuntary functions. The sympathetic or adrenergic division enables the body to respond to emergency or stress. The sympathetic division is further subdivided into alpha adrenergic and beta adrenergic receptors, as well as the parasympathetic is muscarinic and nicotinic. References are taken from Beck's Pharmacology for EMS Providers, pages 28 through 36, Delmore Learning, and Bledsoe's Pre-Hospital Emergency Pharmacology, 7th edition, by Prentice Hall. If you have any questions concerning this chapter, please feel free to give me a call. My name is Roy Smith, smithr at imsa.net or 405-219-7613. Thank you.